Real quick, before we get started, we have something really cool we want to tell you about. Magali Villeneuve is a beloved Magic the Gathering artist whose art we all know very well, and she's got a Kickstarter going on right now featuring her iconic work. The Kickstarter offers playmats with premium stitched edges, hand-stamped and numbered playmats, certificates of authenticity, and more. Art from planeswalkers like Narset Parter of Ales and Liliana Waker of the Dead has been extended to fit the wide ratio of the playmat, and it gives you a view that you can't get in a card frame. And since the Kickstarter hit its stretch goals, they've added new cards cards too, like Tamiyo Inquisitive Student from Modern Horizons 3, as well as two-player and table-length playmats. This project ships worldwide and is still accepting late backers now, so make sure you get your playmat before it's too late. This podcast is brought to you by Dragon Shield. Use code play to win 5 at the affiliate link down below for 5% off to help support the show. Welcome to the Play to Win podcast, where we talk about winning in CEDH. I'm Cam. And I'm Dylan. This week, we are talking about universes beyond that we want to come. These don't exist, and some of them probably haven't been announced, but we are ranking our top 10 universes that we want. Top 10 universe beyond we want. Top 10 universe beyond we want is the title of this week's podcast. That's the prompt. That's what we're figuring out. That's what we're ranking this week. I'm excited. There's lots of stuff that I like that's not magic. Me too. My favorite part about this is that we don't know each other's list. No, not at all. Yeah, we've done this in secret and private, so we're finding out together. Although I have to imagine some of them might probably, they might be similar. I have an idea of what a lot of yours are that mine aren't. But I have no idea where they're ranked on your list. Can you tell me what number you have roller coasters on? Uh, <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> See, I didn't include I didn't include the 76ers because I was like, that's too far. Oh, damn. I, as much as I want to cast Tyrese Maxey, I don't think we're right, getting so that. So is that your honorable mention, the 76ers? We'll start there. That, that's my honorable mention, the Sixers. If I could cast wow. Joel, that'd be great. Universes beyond NBA <laughs> would be so insane. That would be what a crossover. I can't imagine we'd ever actually get something like that, but how fun that would that be. That would be so cool because they would reach into the history of basketball yeah, as well Will Chamberlain like a ton of these players that have been like retired for decades but have left their mark on the game for so long yeah that would be super funny but it would also probably break the the world a little bit too much most of the universes beyond yeah. stuff that we've done is like it's it's fiction it's all been fiction I think well oh, until Leonardo da Vinci was oh, made a card sure. and Cleopatra is now like going to be a card so we have reasons to put actual real people into yeah. universes beyond stuff i think basketball players might break the the feel of the game a little bit too much but i would still love to cast sixers are there any like mechanics that you have in mind oh, for that's a good basketball? one reach joel has to have reach oh they all have all, all, of all them the big have guys reach. have to have reach yeah. for sure yeah I, I don't know i imagine they would behave sort of like archers for some reason like they'd have to throw their basketball as as the weapon so it would be like if they could hit flyers maybe they could okay hit, so hit flyers. you tap them to hit to hit flyers okay yeah that is very archer specific then yeah maybe block extra creatures oh i could see that yeah making some of them good on defense i feel like dennis rodman would say anytime a card goes to your graveyard dennis rodman gets it and he puts it back in your hand like he rebounds it oh he rebounds. rebounds yeah dude rebound would just be reprinted oh. in the set you could just put rebound just in the set. <laughs> yeah that'd be great that's a good idea you yeah. would just put yeah. that's really good wow that would be insane and there's a lot of basketball actions that you can use as instants and sorceries too yeah block Pass would be a hilarious magic card. How would you pass? Well, I'm thinking of that as like an instant. Yeah, what is what does the instant pass do? Does it pass equipment back and forth? It has to allow you to move something. So like, oh. like move an equipment, move an aura. I figured it out. You literally pass a basketball. There's a monarch-like oh. mechanic. That's the basketball. You have the ball. You, you, got, you got the rock. You have the ball, right? <laughs> yeah. If you have the ball, you can like, but like your creatures have the ball, right? Yeah. So like you can pass the ball. Maybe it's weird because it's like the monarch yeah. in that it gives the creature something because it's an equipment. So you can actually pass the ball. Passing is actually giving the ball to someone else. And then that creature, like, can't be blocked or something like that. Can't be. Yeah. Which okay. is dumb because if you have the ball, you, you can, can be blocked. blocked. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I haven't thought we, about we the flavor be behind this but yet. No, I like where your head's at. Having the ball would have to be sort of like the ring. What the ring does to you. Oh, or like the ring tempting you? Yeah, the ring tempts you. It doesn't do a ton. It kind of puts a target on you, if anything. But it gives you like a small amount of advantage because you have the ability to score. Yeah. So maybe it gives your guy plus two, plus two, since points are worth two. And then if you, at some point, if you do... I don't know how you would attack from farther to make a three-pointer out of it. I don't know. I don't know how you do that. But maybe it just gives a buff. 
Maybe it does. And you can pass the ball at instant speed, obviously, right? Obviously, yeah. Or is, does it have to be sorcery speed? Because people can, like, respond to you. What if you, like, uh, kept people had to roll dice? You do the action. Your opponent rolls a six-sided die. If yeah. they do a one, they, they stop it and take it. And then all the other ones, it gets by. And it's That's good. That's so funny because <laughs> as weird as we're getting now, I feel like... Having a variance aspect to passing like that, where like maybe your opponent's creature got there in time and this is how we're dictating that. Yeah. I kind of like that idea. All right. We have some starter points. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> NVA, that was just your honorable mention. Should we, do you want to talk about roller coasters or should we get to our list? Is yours not an honorable no, mention? Should. Mine's not an honorable mention. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I Don't just talked for a while. About it. What's your number 10? All right, so my number 10 is actually something that is coming out and it is kind of Marvel in general, which I've fallen off of significantly since Endgame. After Endgame, I've, you certainly fell off. It's a whole group of people for some reason and I'm in there too. After Endgame, I also fell off. I was a huge Marvel fan, not as much anymore. I was big into it like in college too like i have the encyclopedia like i really got into getting to know a lot of the characters the infinity gauntlet tattooed on me right? i was really into it's it it's so cool and the spider-man ps5 games have been absolutely amazing too the, the swingy games are all, they've been fun for the when i played them on ps2 they've Since been fun back in 2002 <laughs> yeah they've been awesome yeah. awesome games i'm very excited to see what they're actually going to be doing with the marvel set too because there's a lot of very awesome characters that are in Marvel that even are outside of the MCU. My biggest issue with everything Marvel over the past seven, eight, 10 years now is that whenever you see Marvel in something else, it's always just the characters from the movies. Yeah. But there's so many cool Marvel characters that you just like never get to see around. So that's why like when that game Midnight Suns came out and like Ghost Rider was a character you got to use all the time. Like I would love to see Ghost Rider on a magic card. Ghost Rider is sick. Ghost Rider would have to have like Undying or something. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Undying, he's Rakdos, obviously. Is Ghost Rider a demon? The spirit of vengeance, it's Itself is a demon and it's it would it has be like, a host would it be a spirit demon skeleton or or would he be a human on one side and he would transform into like a spirit demon skeleton that's interesting i guess if we're going with the johnny what was his name was his name i want to call him johnny cage but that's clearly the that's guy not from right Mortal but it is johnny he's johnny some, blaze or something like that or is that. that the dude from um the four of them the final, the final four, the, the fantastic the four, fantastic four. That's Johnny Storm. Are there really? All right, and this guy, but this guy's name is also Johnny, right? This Ghost Rider. There's a bunch of Ghost Riders. There's a Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider. There is uh, a Ghost Rider before John as Just well. Just to be clear, we're talking about the Nicolas Cage version, the best one, obviously, the, the original, the original <laughs> Ghost Rider. <laughs> What made me fall in love with Ghost Rider was that movie. Is that your number 10 or is is that just Ghost Rider number 10 or is well, Marvel okay, your number 10? Or do we not get there no, yet? No, now I want to change my number 10 <laughs> to, Ghost Rider. to Nicolas the Cage. Nicolas Cage Ghost Rider. <laughs> I agree, yeah. That one should be way higher on the list. Honestly, if I would have known that that's really what I wanted this whole time, <laughs> that might be my number one, actually. It's like going to therapy and you're like, as we're talking this out, yeah, that's actually the one I want. It turns out, yeah, all of the trauma comes from Ghost Rider. <laughs> This has been Nicolas Cage this whole this time. Whole time, yeah. <laughs> so I would love to see that unfold. Yeah, that would be cool. I feel like the Marvel stuff is gonna have transform, right? Do we know yet? I don't think we do we at don't. this point. What do you think transforms in Marvel? I feel like all of the superheroes transform from or like Peter, Peter Parker, Parker will be on one side into Spider Man. Yeah, or do you Yo, think I didn't be even separate think cards? about that? But that would be very interesting. You would think, yeah, because it's not like every superhero has to do that. It's just the superheroes that have very well known identities. And I imagine if I were to predict, now this might already be out, so I'm going to feel like an idiot if this already exists. But I imagine like if you wanted to make Venom, there would probably be a singular Venom card. There'd be an Eddie Brock card. That transformed into Venom and probably a regular Eddie Brock card too? Or is that too many? I only think that's too many because I think the front sides of the cards would be so lame yeah. that they just wouldn't. <laughs> There's no reason Peter for them to Peter Parker's exist. a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. At yeah. best, he would be Thraben Inspector that flips over into an awesome Spider-Man. Like, at best, that's what I would think that that is. Okay, yeah. But otherwise, like, I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of those, like, Steve Rogers flips yeah, into Captain America. You, you really, yeah, you don't need the human version completely. That makes sense, yeah. Although that is a cool theory. I think that's a cool theory in general. I have a specifically one character from Marvel that's much higher on my list. Do you want... Well, we, we can't get there yet. We'll talk, 
there we'll talk about list. them when we get there. We just I I know who this one is, so right, we just yeah. won't talk about that. What's your number ten? Attack on Titan. Whoa, this one would be really. This cool is too. another one that transform stuff would obviously exist, but we already have Titans in the game. We have giants, so I I think it could be like an easy workaround. I think it'd be cool to see a resleeve of Primeval Titan as the Beast Titan. I you think know, it'd be fucking awesome. I think so too, because I was just about to say that Titan means something to people. Yeah. So like, if you just have all thirteen of the Titans have an ETB and attack trigger that both do the same thing, I think that kind of fits within Magic's world very flavorfully. Yeah, I think so. I think there, there's a lot of stuff that could transfer. I don't know if you could do a full set out of Attack on Titan. I think it might have to be one of the smaller ones maybe, although I would love to see all of it, but I just, I can't imagine they would do like a full set for something like that. So you think they do more like a secret lair with just the 13 Titans or something? But fuck it, it's, this is my fantasy. It can be whatever I want because they're probably not going to do half this shit. So I'm going to say, yeah, do a whole set. We're assuming they're doing a full Lord of the Rings thing where they're also making like commander sets out of all of yeah. these things yeah. too. Hold on. Are there 13 Titans? How many Titans are there? I think there's less. I just want to make sure. Are there less Titans? There's nine Titans. There's nine there's, Titans? There's nine of the. What happened to the other four? There are only, there has been nine Titan Shifters. A secret lair with all nine Titan Shifters would be fucking awesome. All right. Well, then we'll still give like the cool characters. Like you can't not give Captain Levi a character. Though. Absolutely. Captain Levi would have to have a tap destroy any creature ability for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it would also have to have haste and split second and flash and only be one mana. Yeah. I need you to come up with three other cards, though, because I'm stuck on 13. So I, what three other characters, non-Titan characters, I would non -Titan say. Non-Titan characters. Yeah. Hmm. Aaron would be a little bitch. Just a little tiny zero. Aaron, one. comma, little bitch <laughs> is <laughs> his title. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Let me see. Mikasa would be very strong. Mikasa would. Oh, she would, ob she would obviously be one of the other two. A lot the of them four. would have to have, like, I want to say reach because of their gear and stuff. They, if you they, know, they have them, yeah. Yeah, they would have to have reach. What would Mikasa do, though? She also has, it's just like. She, their first, thing is first strike, first strike. I, feel like, I feel like a bunch of abilities first, first strike, strike flash flash all they would just be loaded with a bunch of different abilities vigilance that's yeah. what i think they would do that would be no other statics or triggers just a bunch of keyword soups yeah. i love that all right yeah i think attack on titan would be really cool yeah right, cool my number nine yeah let's hear it pokemon Dude, number nine's my Pokemon. No kidding, really? Yeah, I think I said that wrong, but yeah, my, my number nine is Pokemon also. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow, what are the odds? Give me your first thoughts about Pokemon. All right, so I've been playing the games since Ruby and Sapphire back in 2003, and I've played- Not the originals. No, not the originals, but Fire Red and Leaf Green came out soon after Ruby and Sapphire, so I did pick those up, and I did pick up Crystal from my cousin. So technically, the only generation that I haven't played is the original original generation i was there i was there Bulbasaur, I, didn't, I didn't get anything until the game boy advanced sp oh wow, that was yeah. my first we were handheld only a couple years different but it was there's a big difference it in is time a there. large difference in terms of tv shows and technology from young ages what's your six then because your six is definitely way different than mine are we talking about like just like your personal camera and your six pokemon my personal six is heavily influenced off of some of like the favorite vgc styles that Ooh, i've had okay yeah give them to me do you have a, do you have one in mind i don't mean to put you on the spot it would include like venusaur it would include a sunny day user which if i'm going off the 151 would have to be nine tails which it is could okay be wh whoever you want it can be whoever i whoever want you want it's anyone you can well, be it's gonna be torkoal i'm gonna choose torkoal then torkoal then drought i need something that comes into play oh yeah and gives me sun so venusaur speed doubles and then I need Lapras, because Lapras is fucking awesome. Lapras is awesome. Oh, yeah. And then I need Tyranitar. Very good pick. Very awesome. Um, Ho-Oh, because you didn't say I couldn't choose a legendary. <laughs> Fuck. All right, so, fair. Fine. So, Ho-Oh, and then I cut it off at five, because all the cool gym leaders only have you five. You don't even need a six. So you don't even need a six. I took Ho-Oh. I don't think I should yeah, get a six. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's fair. For me, Venusaur, we're in the same boat in that way. Obviously. Venusaur. Also, Gyarados and Arcanine. Uh, Ooh, very good boy. options yeah i'll mention now that my list is very based on nostalgia only not competitive viability also fair let's get back into the list next we have nitto king one of my favorites from the beginning specifically like the art in like the original game boy games when he's like extra spiky yeah. 
Very cool. Are you sure that we're not just doing 151? Because for me, this is 151 because it's my Pokemon and I'm the gym leader of the first 151. And it's my fantasy. So fuck you. That these are the Pokemon. Haunter is my next one because Haunter is like Gengar, but like a little bit cooler. And you don't need a friend. And I never had a friend, so I never had a Gengar, but I did have a Haunter. Dude, same boat. And then of course Raichu because I'm like Ash, but like a little oh, better. You know you're what better. I mean? yeah, yeah, exactly. My, but mine, Raichu loves me and it wanted to evolve, and that's why I let him evolve. Like the whole time. Yeah. The whole time he, he wanted to. It's his idea. So yeah, that's my six. I think that is funny and very telling how we feel about like later Pokemon and shit. Yeah, I was some of them are great. I did play Pokemon Go for a while and I, I played into the later generations. I played a whole bunch of the Game Boy games also, but for me, like the reason why I like Pokemon is the nostalgia. So the first 150s, that's the reason I like that. I played a lot of Pokemon Go too as well. But I think it would also be very interesting to see like how they might potentially adapt the TCG Pokemon game into Magic. That's more of a question for you because I never really got into the TCG for Pokemon. Yeah. But I did like everything else Pokemon. So like, is there any like Pokemon mechanics that you could see transferring to Magic that magic doesn't have that's a great question so i played pokemon a long time ago uh, i played competitively for a short amount of time when donking was the thing that happened a lot which is when you could win on the first turn of the game immediately right away your opponent didn't do anything and they just lost and that was the match it wasn't out of three they just ha played no game actions and then were dead that was an awesome time i can't believe that the, that was something that was allowed the deck was called sable donk it wasn't even like the best deck but when it had those broken starts it was just dominated so eventually it got banned but i played during that time the main difference that i remember from pokemon and uh, magic is in pokemon you can't really interact with what your opponent does everything's sorcery speed at least back then it was but i think it's a list now you do everything on your turn they pass they do everything on their turn the mana system is a little bit different like you play the energies as lands those are the same thing but you attach your mana to a specific creature oh so okay you, you can't activate it for everything in some ways it's a little bit like more broken because i remember cards that you could for for no mana the trainers and the supporters don't cost any mana you can just refill your hand pretty easily in pokemon you can do that a lot but since you can't interact with your opponent it's just a little bit different that would be fun if they did like the whole set like they did portal and like all through like portal three kingdoms and stuff everything where, is sorcery speed yeah everything sorceries and even like mana abilities on pokemon would say activate this ability only as a sorcery and like yeah. they would strictly enforce that that would be a very fun way to do it or i shouldn't say fun that would be a very like realistic true, game. To, form. true to form translation yeah but i feel like didn't like people has had bad things to say about that set right when you couldn't do anything at instant speed I mean, it's never fun to just, like, watch your opponent do everything and yeah. you can't do anything. But like, for a brief that's why time. Hearthstone sucked. Yeah. But for a brief time, like, during just the one thing, I think that would be, like, a fun, like, experiment. So. Different yeah, it's pace. just for the Pokemon set. And obviously, we would get a Professor Oak reprint of Wheel of Fortune. Oh, yeah. That would be great. That would be so cool. basically do the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Right? I think that would be a great homage homage i think you were right the first time <laughs> i don't know there was a, a a pause there and then i didn't i second guess myself <laughs> i thought you were gonna say something else i was waiting no i thought you were waiting for me to realize how much of an idiot no, i am. no 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 the other thing that i was thinking is the land since the pokemon you attach the energies to the pokemon i wonder if there'd be a way to like attach your land directly to one of your creatures and it would give it like a buff or something like that oh kind of like fortify fun. i don't remember what fortify does but does fortify do that fortify is a mechanic that's on one card from time spiral testing my knowledge future site is what it is and uh of course i was like oh we don't need the laptops today <laughs> but fortify i want to say is off the top of my head is equipment but on your lands and i feel like if that's what fortify is then that would be great what you're saying right now sounds so made up to me maybe that could be definitely right though but i like the idea of attaching lands or something to the creatures that are pokemon it would be hard like in a lot of ways you'd want to like transfer it like directly like the pokemon the charizard card directly to a magic card but i wonder if they wouldn't really take that into consideration and just like make charizard as a magic card you know what i mean you, you know what i mean yeah i think they'd probably just make charizard, make charizard as a right? magic card yeah give them a fire breathing and just call it a day what about the trainers misty and brock stuff like that do you think they'd make it onto cards or would you want to see just the pokemon or do you want to see them too that's interesting i feel like i want to see just the pokemon as creatures and i'd rather see misty and brock on like enchantments maybe okay yeah that'd be fun or no, dude, they're fucking planeswalkers. Planeswalkers. Obviously. That makes way more sense. Yeah. Wow. Ash yeah. would definitely be a planeswalker. They're definitely planeswalkers. Um, 
And they all say minus two, put a creature from your hand into play. Definitely. <laughs> yes, of course. They all, yeah, they all have to do something with the actual Pokemon stuff. Or their plus one returns a creature from your side of the field to your hand. It would be cool if they have like Pokemon would be like a subtype, a creature Pokemon, you know? That'd be interesting. You just can't print any like Pokemon Lords then, because then every single Pokemon card you control like, get, get plus one meta, plus one. Yeah, yeah, like oh, a hundred percent of my creatures just get plus one plus one. I think that would be cool though, because then the cards could say put a Pokemon from your hand into play, and then that would be very great and fun. Otherwise, put a creature from your hand into play that is a Pokemon. Like, how would you distinguish the Pokemon? It have to be Pokemon type, or would it just be Pokemon? Would just be the creature type, rather than not a subtype. It would just be. Pokemon no, a creature it's type. a it's like a whatever typeal is. That's a whole like another... a, instead of a legendary creature, it's a Pokemon creature. Uh oh, interesting. This way we get to make Tarmogoyf a little bit better so too. So Pokemon isn't the creature type; it's a Pokemon creature. It's a super type. Mm, okay, yeah. okay. And then for like, and then they're all their subtype is all beast. Like, would Pikachu be a mouse though? Mouse is in the game uh, now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like Drift Bloom would be a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> They have balloon tokens, so, like, that would work. <laughs> yeah, right? Would they do all, like, 900 of the Pokemon? How many are there now? Do you know? I think there's over 1,000. There's 1,000 now? I mean, there's nine generations of them. Although, I guess now a lot of the new generations don't have 100 new Pokemon in them. A lot of the new generations might only have 50 of them. It's not enough. If we're not at four digits, we're very close to four digits in Pokemon now. That would be too many cards, but it's our fantasy, so fuck it. All the Pokemon are getting in the set, All right? the Pokemon. Well, not all the Pokemon make it into the new games either. They don't put 1,000 Pokemon in each new game. So, so lame. So they probably... You, you dug to your grave. Put them all in. Put <laughs> all 1,000 Pokemon in every game. In every card set, 1,000 Pokemon. 1,000 of them, yeah. Every time. That's, that, that's my take. Every new Pokemon expansion, yeah. <laughs> At least 1,000 Pokemon. Wow, yeah. Magic does it. Why can't they? Shinies. They would definitely have to do shinies oh. like how they do serialized, but instead of the serialized, it's just a different color. The Charizard's just the whatever, the different color. I think they would probably still serialize them, though. Maybe so it would, would say know. shinies just so you don't accidentally mess it up. That would be awesome. Wow, yeah. Pokemon, turns out, would be fucking dope. From Magic directly. Evolve. Evolve is already in Magic, so we could do that. Oh, yeah. I feel like it would have to say whenever this creature evolves, search your library for an Ivysaur card and put it on top of this Bulbasaur. It would have to do something like that. The, what's the mechanic in Ikoria? Mutate? I think mutate would make a little bit more sense. Right? Yeah. We have all the wrong words for what we want to do. We want mutate the mechanic, but we want the name evolve. They have evolve, and then under that it says whenever this creature evolves, search your library for blah blah card and mutate it onto this card. Oh, no. The real solution is they're flip cards. So, like, but you do... Three. That's the innovation. <laughs> Three-sided magic cards would make their debut for the Pokemon set. It's a Bulbasaur, you turn it over. It's an Ivysaur, you turn it over again. It's a Venusaur again. <laughs> On the Z plot. Yes. Oh, God. They, that's the new magic innovation. They for break this. physics and they figure out how to make a three-sided <laughs> card. Side, yeah. There's got to be a way to do that with like, um, what were those old posters from the 90s when you look at them different ways? Oh, yeah. It's it's literally that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it was one way, it was Bulbasaur, and you hold it the other way, it's Ivysaur. Or maybe this is where we finally introduce flip cards with transform cards, like oh. the ones that go upside down. So yeah, it's Bulbasaur, from original it's Kamigawa, Ivysaur, it's and Venusaur, then flip- and then it's Venusaur EX or whatever. Uh, the It evolves again, <laughs> Mega Venusaur or something. Oh, there's a bunch. There's a Dynamax version of Venusaur, that too. That one, yeah. Well, you have to combine that one with another one, because that sounds like it's big, right? Dynamax is big. And with the power of the Pulmerization card. <laughs> is that Yu-Gi-Oh! now? Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! Is Yu-Gi-Oh! Is Yu-Gi-Oh! Reference? on your list? No, it's not. Should but we that get, would be good, though. We should move on to the we next We should move list. on. We could literally spend the rest of the day talking about <laughs> yeah. Pokemon, but... For me? No, you're number eight. Number eight is vampires from everywhere. Just vampires. Just vampires. I want Blade. I want the vampires from Underworld. I want all the vampires. We already have vampires in Magic. It's so easy. That's so funny how the we are going to get Blade, but we're going to get him in the Marvel set before we get an actual... That's true. Blade isn't my guy at the top. Blade is awesome, and I'm very excited. I hope Blade is good in Edgar Markov. I hope he's one mana, and he does like a whole bunch of little things. He's probably going to destroy vampires, is what Blade is probably going to do, because that's what Blade does. And that's not going to be what I want. So we'll see. 
Yeah, we'll see. But vampires. There's a lot of good vampires that are out there. I don't need to talk about the mechanics of vampires because they're already here. Death Touch and Life Flink and Flying and yada yada. But I'm excited for just vampires on the whole. We just need more of them. Yeah. Castlevania. Ooh, Castlevania would be good. Yeah. Very into that. That would be JoJo's awesome. Bizarre Adventure. Which I haven't gotten to yet, but you've told me there's vampires, which sounds awesome. I mean, I'm only seven episodes in, but Spoilers. I know I know of one vampire. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> so? They're on my list. Whoever that is, they, uh, they're also. What about you? All right. <laughs> What's your was, next one? Wow, that was very short compared to the Pokemon <laughs> one, talk. Yeah. So will this one be? This one will be too. So there's a couple of video games called Dishonored that were made by Bethesda that I really, really, really like. And the first game you play is this guy, Corvold. The dragon? No, uh, no, I did say Corvold, didn't I? I meant to say Corvo, C-O-R-V-O. Corvo. Corvo, yeah. And uh, the assassination of the Empress is pinned on you. And you have to, you're dishonored, right? So you have to, you have to undishonor yourself. Honor myself. Yeah, you have to become honored. And the game is really cool. There's a lot of really cool powers that you get then too. Um, like there is an ability called Blink that lets you go from one place to another on the map very quickly. That kind of exists in Magic. You blink stuff. Blinking stuff, right? So like, I feel like a lot of those things, like the actual powers that he's using in the game can translate very well to instants and sorceries that you can use as well. You say powers. Is this person human? He is human, but there is this entity called the Outsider that uh, if you get, if you get the Outsider's mark, you can use like a bunch of different abilities. Like God? Yes, but actually no. No, okay. But just some kind of supernatural being. Okay. So you get the, like that ability to blink and like just end up somewhere else. Corvo can like actually stop time. Um, you can like possess someone else's body. Is this like Assassin's Creed? Isn't Assassin's Creed time stuff? No, by stop time, like he just stops time and like for five seconds, like you can like run somewhere else and then get away. This yeah. is more of a stealth game than Assassin's Creed, in my opinion. This is a first-person perspective game, and it's a lot better than Assassin's Creed in, like, a myriad of different ways. Okay, could you put myriad in this set? I will now because I said that. So, yeah, we'll put myriad in. <laughs> and then in the second, the second game takes place, like, 18 years later. So you can choose to play the story through either as Corvo or as his daughter, Emily, which is super cool. She has her own abilities as well. So like you can build off of that. The DLC for the first game, you play as one of the bad guys, which is also very cool. And he also has the outsider's mark and has his own abilities as well that differ. So like getting to see all those different characters from that world, I think would be super cool. I don't know. I don't want to talk too much about it, but talk as much as you like about it. That sounds awesome. That sounds super cool. Oh, it is very cool. They are some very, very cool games from a time before every single game was just this open world with empty space in it. What color do you think Corvo would be? That's a really good question. I feel like he would be Orzov just because the ending of the game also changes depending on like how many people you kill. There's like high chaos ending. There's low chaos ending. So I could see like the duality of both of those on like his card as well. Interesting. Or even this being like a transform mechanic and having it kind of be like night day where like there's the high chaos side where like there's more negative things that are attached to you i guess there's a plague going around in both of the games then too so like you're you're you could have like minus one minus counters if like you're on one side or like infect maybe or toxic something like that yeah i could see that too oh yeah like even weepers toxic i think that'd be super cool it seems like a lot of the stuff that we like uh, is about transforming what do you think that's about i think that's just a really easy way to depict things on magic cards yeah as much as i hate taking cards out of sleeves i mean like why do we like stuff that's about transforming oh <laughs> oh i don't know like all of our interests everything transforms. everything transforms into something else yeah guess what that's gonna come up like a ton <laughs> My next one's not really like transforming, but it probably could be a little bit. Mine is horror movies, which I'm not sure if the next in October we're getting a set that's like loosely based off of 80s horror movies, I think. Yeah. What's it called again? Something. Something. That set, maybe that'll have some of these cards, but I'd love to see Freddy or Jason or any of the like classic 80s or 90s or who's the who's the little guy from Saw? Fuck, what's his name? What's I want to say Rickshaw, but it's not Jigsaw. Jigsaw. That would be fun. Yeah, a Jigsaw card would be really cool, yeah, though. Yeah, I don't know what they would do. A lot of these characters, like, I want to say, like, 
tap and deal a damage to a creature or something like that they'd have to like attack a creature directly i feel like but that's he not does, very creative i uh, know i think there's like some kind of way that you can show that he's doing something psychological i feel like if he mills players like i could see something like that i would say freddy would probably have to introduce the daytime nighttime mechanic and you have to Ooh, like yeah. when freddy's out it's always nighttime he phases out when it's the day oh yeah that's but he what, phases oh, yeah. back in at night there we go that's what it is and then when he during nighttime he's like super super buff and your guys can't do anything or it something. It sucks how many of these universes require the day-night mechanic, Oh, too. really? Because that's hysterically and notoriously one of the worst mechanics in Magic oh, just because Total of trash. tracking it, yeah. right? So, like, the fact that we just keep introducing universes that are like, yeah, the day-night mechanic, yeah. let's throw do, that have in. We, well, I guess we didn't talk about that for vampires, but that would be a great one for vampires. Are there other ones that you have on your list that would introduce the daytime? Can I just talk about something with Dishonored with, like, having day-night, maybe? Did you? Or about having a low chaos. I guess just transform. Low chaos, the know. transform. Yeah, the transform. Day and night has come up earlier today, I think, already. Day and night would be great in a lot of these. I agree with you. You're right. I'm sorry. I, I got us off track. That was bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Killer clowns from outer space would be another one. We have uh, a couple of clown tokens and unsets and stuff. I think Killer clowns from outer space would be fun to see the art cards. Uh, and in the sets. Wait, what's your number seven? You got a number seven? Yeah, I have a number seven. Avatar The Last Airbender. Very nice. This okay. isn't like my favorite thing in the universe, right? I think, still think it's a really good show. It's one of the very few like animated things I've been able to get Courtney into as well. And I think just seeing this universe in magic form would just be very cool. Yeah, so we have water for blue, uh, white for air. Fire for red. Fire for red. Ground is green. Yep. And then what's the last color? Black. What do we do there? What if what if this set had no black in it? Mm, like the like the no instant set. There's a no black set. There's just no black in this whole set. It'd be a very interesting way to do it. Are there any like um cursed items in uh in Avatar? Any like um evil objects? You know what? There's like the whole spirit world. You could just like do spirits. Spirits as yeah. just black. Yeah. There's some good spirits where I don't know if that would necessarily make sense. But Maybe black is a splash color. Some of the evil characters have black in them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where like there's not really a lot of black, but it's just a splash. I think that's fair because this would not be like a set set, I guess. This would be more like commander decks that they would do. Yeah, you have to do specific ones. Is there one in mind that you really want to see, like Aang or something? I guess really the entire Avatar line would be the coolest thing to see. Like, not just Aang, but, like, also, like, going back to, like, Avatar Kyoshi and Avatar, oh, the one before that, who was also really cool. Yang Chen, I want to say her name was. Who's a big monster, Apaka guy, the creature that they ride on? Oh, Appa. Appa. Oh, yeah. Appa would be so cool. I want to see Appa, yeah. They just reprint Holy Cow as Appa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, there's there's a lot of really cool creatures in that universe, too, where like, they just mash up two different animals to make something else. Like, they do, like, uh, ducks and turtles. They mash together, so they're just ducks with turtle shells and shit like that, right? Like, there's a ton of that going on in that show. So I think bringing a lot of those animals to life would also be super cool. That makes sense. Yeah. I like that one. What about you? What's your next one? The Misfits. This one would also have oh. to only be a very short one. You'd have to just do Glenn and Jerry and Doyle. The three of them, I think, would make great cards. They would have to be some sort of skeleton, zombie, something. Doyle would have to be like a Frankenstein lookalike or something. As far as what they would do, it's hard to like, they're real people in a band. That's what they like do. But like their look is like, they're like Scully and Corpsey and dead. So I don't know which abilities you give them. I feel like Doyle would have to be the biggest one. He'd have to be... Because he's he's very enormous and extremely jacked, so I feel like he would have to be like our toughness wise. He has to be a six six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Glenn would have to be very small, just in stature. The man is a tiny guy. How tall is he? Yeah, I think he's like five two. Oh, that's yeah. probably not true. He's probably like five six or something. But Glenn's a one one. <laughs> yeah, one two. He'd have to be small, best. but he'd have to be loud somehow. He would have to. I don't know when he attacks, tap down creatures because he's so loud. Or I was something gonna, or, like that. or even maybe he get, he pumps himself when he attacks. Like when Glenn attacks, he gets plus three plus three, and that's how he shows his strength. I think it'd be cool if when the three of them are together, they can all get a buff. You know what I mean? Oh, all three like, of them yeah. They, on, like Voltron themselves. They Voltron kind of, themselves yeah. together. Exactly. It'd be cool if they had like undying, just like a normal, like creepy 
you know, mechanic or something like that. Or like one has undying, one and then has another persist. one has persist, yeah. and then another one has something else like unearth maybe. Or- Ooh, yeah. So Doyle would have unearth, and then I think he's uh, the guitar player. He's like the Frankenstein type, so I feel like that that would make sense for him to yeah, have. Yeah, that would that checks out. Jerry would have persist. Jerry only would have persist because he's been doing it the whole time when Glenn Danzig left. Yeah, he's been persisting just the longest. So that makes the most sense for him. <laughs> I and love then that. Glenn would have undying because he just recently came back to the Misfits. So, so that would be. The perfect oh, that's one so me. perfect. That's yeah, a great that, one. I ship it. As far as what they actually do in their stats, besides that, I don't know. Doyle would be six six, uh, a six six. Glenn would be uh, one two, and Jerry would be a four four. I feel like you got to get their instruments in there somewhere. We're like, I think vocally you can portray that somehow, either by like tapping down, like we said, or give them battle cry, maybe. Mm. Oh, battle maybe cry. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. that's like, what it I is. I think there's ways that like you can portray instruments like that yeah vocals is battle cry for bass what do you got for bass oh boy you gave me like the hardest one all right, right let's, let's go to guitar what about guitar oh you gave me the second hardest <laughs> one <laughs> <laughs> battle cry is good unleash no that doesn't really work that's like unleash a dog would one. be great if there was a drummer involved riot no, yeah oh okay mm. whoa riot riot could be whoa, fun that's metal let me think let me think we should have a list of all of the mechanics of all the mechanics What's the most metal mechanic? What if they got new mechanics? We can give them new mechanics. It's a great idea, right? I have no idea. It's not our problem to come up with. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's something that Wizards needs to come up that with. That was We're my number six. Giving them the ideas. All right, so my number six, this is roller coasters. <laughs> I think saying Six Flags Universes Beyond is the funniest way to say that. That's true, yeah. But I, I obviously don't want to exclude it to Six Flags. I want to get, like, Universal Studios and, like, Cedar Fair in there as well and, like, Dollywood, right? I want to make sure that you get all the parks in there. How do you show roller coasters? Are they artifacts? Are they vehicles? I mean, the way that I would do it is that they're creatures. The roller coasters are just creatures. Okay, but they'd have to be artifact creatures. The wooden ones, I guess. The wooden aren't. ones are could be like just green. But like I think it would also depend on the theming of the coasters, the colors of the coasters as well. I think there are some blue coasters give out me, there. Give me your top three roller coasters and what colors their cars would Ooh, be. Okay. So my number three roller coaster is this is so funny. They're all RMCs. So funny. What the fuck is an RMC? It's the manufacturer of <laughs> okay. the of the coaster. Yeah. So my number three is Lightning Rod at Do- Dollywood, and that is a that was the first and only wood coaster with a launch. So I think you'd have to put that something like that. Like it has to have haste. Then I'm thinking it's got to be Boros, and it's on a wooden coaster. The whole thing is themed to like a, a hot rod. And like like those kind of old timey hot rod kind of cars. So I think the the vehicle aspect for this one I think would make a lot more sense maybe than some other ones I guess. Okay. What colors? Red. It would be red. Mono red. It's mono red. And it has haste. I don't know what other kind of mechanics they would get. What about your number two? My number two is Twisted Colossus. Two. Okay, so it's big. Which is at Six Flags Magic Mountain. It's actually not big. Well, what the fuck is that name for then? Well, because when the original Colossus was built, it was the tallest and fastest coaster at the time at like 115 feet. But now it is a dueling wood steel hybrid coaster. Yeah. Which is just an absolute blast. It's so fun. It's got amazing elements all throughout it. Is this transformed dueling? Are there two sides? Yeah, it could. I kind of like that where it would start off on the blue side because that's what you do you start off on the blue side you go through the whole layout on the blue side and then you go through the whole layout on the green side so i could see it like you start off on one side that's blue and then it flips over into a green creature it's got to be almost like the undercity once you do go through certain things go through all these certain things then it switches over so you have to do this do that do this and then switches it i like that and then it turns over into the green side and then it does other stuff wins the game because it's awesome wins the game okay when it flips over you win the game or you make a copy of itself oh you make a copy of itself on the blue side oh that's actually so flavorful because the way that it works is that the coaster has three trains going at all times and if it's operating fast enough and if people are moving fast enough you ideally get each train to ride with the next one so as you go your blue side is dueling with the green side of the train that loaded in the station before you and then as you go through the green side the people that were waiting behind you are taking the blue side up oh okay so i think that would be very funny if after it flips it creates a blue side version of itself that can flip into a green and just kind of chain its way scoot swarmy oh yeah that That would be very cool 
specific. That is, ve- it's very specific. <laughs> However, I think it's very flavorful if you know Twisted Colossus. Yeah, I agree. And then my number one is Steel Vengeance, which is at Cedar Point. And this ride actually has like a whole backstory. And- has lore? Yeah, there's lore to it. So I would want to kind of include that a little bit. I don't really know a lot of the lore behind it. I'm a terrible coaster fan. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I would want to include that. And it's kind of like, outlaws of thunder junction theme so i could see it just being like in this set even oh okay what colors colorless yeah steel it's a steel thing it's steel yeah it's a big steel thing it's bigger than the titan thing that you said for number two? Oh yeah this is a it's a hyper coaster how it's big over is 200 it? feet 200 yeah over 200 i don't know the exact type but it's over 200 feet so that's what it'd be I would call it Universes Beyond Six Flags, just because that's funny. Okay. <laughs> but it would really be an all-inclusive roller coaster set. Is Six Flags is the one with the bald cap and the glasses. Dun, 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 yes, right? that's them. Although that should be a card. Oh yeah, he would be a card. But just so you're clear, yeah. Six Flags and Cedar Fair just merged. Okay. So our home park here Dorney is park. now. Yes, that is now also under the same ownership as Six Flags. So the Flags. bald guy is going to be at our park too. Could be, yeah. They won't put him there. I think they'll still keep them, like, separated. Like, I think you'll still be able to walk into a Six Flags and go, oh, this is a Six Flags. All right, because he'll be greeting you. Yes. He that's and Bugs Bunny will be up front <laughs> greeting you, yeah. Okay. All right, that's great. What's your next one? Is this your number six? My, that was my number six prior. Okay. Right now we're on my number five, which is Death Note. Whoa, Death Note. That's another cool one. Death Note would be cool. I would love to see Ryuk as a demon. Uh, the Shinigami are really sweet. I would love to see what Ryuk does because Ryuk doesn't actually do a lot of like any combat or anything. I think Ryuk would honestly probably be like a zero one, but would be able to tap to man this is another creature that i maybe i'm just not very creative with designing a card <laughs> but i just think he should he writes the names of people in the book so that's what i think Ryuk should do he should have f- like a fog bank kind of effect where he can't deal damage and damage can't be dealt to him that makes sense but he can still destroy things because that's not dealing damage okay sure l would have to somehow like either make clues or crack clues or something with investigate he investigates a ton maybe light would have to be making the clues that l Cracks the clues or something like that? L's ability says sacrifice a clue, draw a card. Uh Oh, yeah, okay. That's what yeah. L says. That's the, that could make sense. I love that. Oh, my God. That's my invitational card. Holy <laughs> shit. Although I don't think that there's enough. Wait, what's your invitational card? It's crack a, sacrifice a clue, draw a card? On a, a white and a colorless for a 2-2 two, two yeah. that says sacrifice a clue, draw a card. And I have first strike, too. That's your. That's the card that you would that's make for yourself. That's what I would do. Yeah. It doesn't make clues. Well, they probably would say, "Hold up, buddy. You ca- it can't make clues too." <laughs> I feel like that's what happens with invitational cards, right? They you hold would, them back. I don't think you go in saying, "Hello, I would like an underpowered co- uncommon." Please. Well, you got to start at the top and let them do- dock some things off. Mine would be a one mana five five with haste and flying. When it deals damage to you, you discard two cards at, at random, random, and it's got <laughs> double strike. When it deals combat damage the second time, <laughs> take another combat after this, and then I'm going to make them take all the oh stuff away. Oh, my God. I think we're finding out this episode we shouldn't be designing cards. <laughs> I have no idea. I love Death Note. I would love to see Death Note cards. That's Death why it's Note on my list. That would be really cool. What's There's the a- next one on your list? All right. Next one on my list is Bioshock. This is another very video game series that I really like in a universe that I think would be so cool to see. The whole story behind it all, I think, is... Just super interesting. I don't really have too much to say about this. Seeing the big daddies and the little sisters on cards, I think would just be so badass. Transforming the set? Transforming the set. I don't know if I'd put transform in the set. Day no. night? No, I wouldn't put day night okay. in. No. Do, do any of the creatures tap to destroy a creature? Probably. Oh, shit. We almost had it. We almost had something different. <laughs> I've heard Bioshock is cool. I don't even play. Bioshock's great. Apparently, they're making a fourth one, which I really hope that that actually is a thing that comes to fruition. Um, but I would love to see Bioshock and Magic. Maybe when the fourth game comes out, there'll be a little Magic set that goes with it. You know what? Around the same time that Assassin's Creed cards are coming out, there is a new Assassin's Creed game that's coming out, too. They know what they're doing. They know how to make a buck. Oh, they certainly do. When you just go, oh, copy and paste from the last game into the next one. <laughs> <laughs> That was easy. Is that what Assassin's Creed is? That's why there's a new one like every year. (laughs) Because it's the same game. My character is just different. That's all that it is. But I still have trouble running around. And Are you going to get the new Assassin's Creed? Are you you just saying you're bad at video games? No, I'm saying saying Assassin's Creed in particular has terrible mobility. All right. I've played three Assassin's Creed games, and they all are horrible to move your character around. Are you going to get the new one? No. No, you're not going to. No, I'm not going to. My next one is Deadpool. Just Deadpool. The Marvel 
Deadpool guy I was talking about from just earlier. Deadpool, Deadpool. Yeah. Deadpool is one of my favorites. He was like the reason why I got into comics originally. Obviously, he has regenerate. He has regenerate, obviously. Duh. No transform. Although he is a merc, so uh, he's a mercenary. So I think that maybe tap to destroy a creature would make sense here. But he probably doesn't need to transform. He can just be Deadpool, I would imagine. What was the mechanic you gave him? Regenerate. Yeah, regenerate. I think is it just honestly, like a, he has a ton of ability. What, yeah, he has. A, he would be another one that seems to me like just like a, a big pile of stats, like a big pile of keywords. I think a lot of these Marvel heroes are going to be really tough because you kind of want to represent all of their powers. Yeah. If you don't have the space to give them multiple cards, so like. Deadpool is known for guns, for his katanas, but, like, he also has, like, a teleporter. Like, he can also teleport. How do I, like, is that something that I also have to keep in mind? Is he going to be a seven-mana 2-2 because of all of the shit that he can do? I think he would definitely at least have to be his main, Deadpool's main thing would have to be, like, almost impossible to kill. He'd have to be, like, indestructible or whenever he dies, regenerate him or he'd have to have some type of squee. Maybe just like a maybe so just squeeze whenever he dies. Yeah. You can cast him from exile. Oh, I like, like that. that idea too. That might be good. Um, and then his ability to like take out people, like be an assassin. I think like the tap to deal an amount of damage to something would be something he could do. I think he would actually be set up like Yu Gi Oh's Exodia, mm. where you have to find the five pieces of Deadpool, and then you win the game when you assemble the five pieces of Deadpool. Interesting. The left leg of Deadpool. Oh, the left arm funny. of Deadpool. That would be really. That funny. would be very funny because Deadpool's also very meta like i feel like his card also has to represent that he knows that he's in a card game it would have to be borderline and uncard i think like to have to make it on of a card as it can be he's like the only character that gets like unique treatment a lot of the time so it'd be funny if his text box on the actual card was yellow where everyone else is that would be normal color because his speech bubble is always yellow and he's looking at you yeah. And his, yeah, he's looking at you and he's saying something to you. There's like a speech bubble yeah. in the art. Oh, yeah, man, oh. I, I hope that these Marvel sets have oh. speech bubbles in the art. And they that can would put be fun. flavor text in the art like flavor that. Flavor text in the art is speech bubbles. That's fun. And he's fun. just saying, hey, hey, you fucker or something. Yeah, that would be that really That was fun. my best Deadpool impression. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? I'm, hey, hey, fucker. It's Deadpool. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Yeah. What about you? What's your next one? The last one that I said was Bioshock. So that means that this one is just Super Smash Brothers. Oh. Because I had Fire Emblem on the list. And then I was like, why would I just limit it to one Nintendo franchise? Yeah. Why not just like make all Nintendo franchises available in a universe beyond product? Okay. So just Super Smash Bros. And just have one set that's Mario, Luigi, and Link, and all the Fire Emblem stuff. Pikachu and Pokemon and, and Kirby. stuff. Kirby. Yeah. yeah. You just okay. do all that all in one. Mario. Mario would have to be a red creature that does something. It ha- taps to deal damage because he throws fireballs, right? Maybe when he eats a food, he gets no, bigger. No, he has fireball, which means that for a red and X, you can deal X damage to a creature. That's what it is. And pay two extra mana to divide it amongst another target. Okay, yeah. Is Bowser like a turtle dragon type, right? Bowser would be turtle dragon type? Yeah, definitely turtle dragon. Yeah. Would Peach be in there? Peach would be in there, yeah. What about um Samus? Oh, of course, yeah. If they're in Super Smash Brothers, they are in this. How do you represent the the big energy ball with Samus? Charge counters. Charge counters. Obviously, Tap yeah. to put a charge counter. Yeah, or like you put mana into it, and then for a certain amount of mana, or if something happens, then you can let it go. Okay. You deal yeah. a certain amount of damage. Kirby would have to be some type of clone right kirby sucks up your opponent's cards and then you yeah yeah i'd have to clone it and then they can recast it again for zero or something what's the name of fractured sanity is that the name of the card that's the, the name of a card for sure the one that exiles a creature and then you get a token copy of it maybe it's basically that except on a creature that's a clone i like that for kirby and there's just a ton of characters you get like a yoshi yeah which would also mean that because we're doing super smash brothers that also means we get like solid snake and we get sonic the hedgehog that would be so many as well yeah. too so fox. like there's so oh you get fox yeah i'm only naming stuff from the first one what about marth he's not from the first one marth is not from the first one but yeah like all the fire emblem characters like that marth like is Roy. fire emblem marth is fire emblem yeah marth is from the first fire emblem one actually. of those fire emblem characters is really good in super smash bros right I don't think it's Marth, but one of them is supposed to be really good. Which Super Smash Brothers are you talking about? Oh fuck, I forgot this answer is actually not as clear as I want it to be. Yeah. I don't I don't really realistically I don't even know the question I'm asking. Because there's like in the current <laughs> Super Smash Brothers, there's like 40 different characters. And like you get to play as like Piranha Plant. Piranha Plant's one of my mains. I love Piranha Plant. Is that the plant from Mario? Yeah, that the things that come out of the, the That's pipes. fun. There's also like Street Fighter characters are in there as well too. Is Street so Fighter you- up on your list? You like Street Fighter, don't you? Well, it's not because we already have a Street Fighter secret lair. Oh yeah, you can't really yeah, there's no really 
point to do that. And I'm not really into. I'm into Marvel versus Capcom okay. three. Ultimate Marvel versus Capcom three specifically. Not Street Fighter. <laughs> it's different, Mom. They're different. <laughs> But yeah. All right, what's your next one? My next one is The Matrix. This one would be also kind of tricky. And to be honest, I haven't really fully fleshed it out, but it would, it would just be such a cool thing to see on cards. That would be cool. The foiling treatment is really the only thing that I'm thinking about is like how you would show like the green uh, figures and stuff going down oh, in the foiling. Dude. I think that would be super cool. Be, yeah, all of the treatments for that would be insane. I think this is another one that transform you'd have to do like a transform maybe because they do go in and out of the Matrix and they look all different and stuff. I feel like they it would just do them in the matrix with yeah their that's another one again like, there's, trench no, coats. there's no reason to have the why other why would side. you just do keanu reeves yeah, yeah it's keanu reeves he's got a shaved head and yeah. he's wearing sweatpants he can't do anything but <laughs> this other version he's an oh one that just says Nothing. transform him if you meet this okay. requirement no, you're right yeah. you're right just show the cool version i think neo would have to phase himself out i think because he can do the bullet stuff oh yeah you have to be able to like dodge everything what does mr anderson do well neo is mr anderson um though yeah (laughs) i haven't seen these movies in so long (laughs) tom anderson i think is like neo's like human name hugo weaving what does he do the machine he's like the machine that's after uh neo what's his fucking name though he's got like a name agent smith agent smith that's mr smith mr smith would be cool he would have to make other stuff him so he can like make something a copy of him. Oh, so like he can like turn humans into like versions of him that exist. Somehow that's a make one a creature- mana one three already. Sure, make other creature a copy of this creature. Permeating mass is the, name is that of the what card it is? that already exists. That's Mr. Smith. As far as the other characters, I'm not really sure. You know, Mr. Smith feels easy to me. Neo would have to be able to phase himself out, and he would be very very strong. This could be a four card secret layer. This but- could be a quick one, I think. Um, but really, just like I feel like the foiling in particular, for some reason, I think it would look really cool in uh in a Matrix secret layer. Yeah, I totally agree. What about you? What next one my number three is skyrim mm. which i guess they would really do all of the elder scrolls but i would really only care about the skyrim that's stuff. the one that anyone gives a shit about yeah 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 like i played through oblivion but oblivion made it really easy to like skip the story mm. and you like, don't like that. You don't miss want that. out on a lot of like the open world yeah. stuff skyrim made it a little bit harder to do that and i just always had more fun playing skyrim so i would say Skyrim. You got any um, specific characters that you'd want to see or abilities that you think would transfer well, over Skyrim well? Skyrim has a bunch of dragons, so I think that would go over very well, too. I feel like Skyrim is, like, sort of similar to Lord of the Rings. Is that true? I would say, like, if you mix, like, Cold Time and Lord of the Rings okay. together, I would say you kind of get, like, something like that. That feels close. I think yeah. that'll make a lot of sense. Take it away. What's your number two? Dragon Ball Z. That's what I would pick. That's nice. My, that's the one that I want this to see the most. This was either your number two or number one. I was thinking, yeah. I think it would just be it's maybe my favorite IP. I think since I was a kid, it just it stuck with me forever. I would love to see uh, Goku and Vegeta and everyone. They oh have, yeah, they have flying transform and other ones. They would all have to have transform. Although it, it would, they have transform into multiple forms, not just two. So they would need like a four or five sided card. Yeah, I mean, luckily they already came up with the technology that's when we true. went to Pokemon. Yep. So yeah, that's true. I don't know that I have anything specific. I think level up maybe would be another. Way that they could kind of show it. Oh, if the, instead, if of, had level instead up. of doing like six sided cards, yeah. you just level them up. It's not quite level up because it's saying they're going full full new forms a lot of the time so that would be kind of you would miss out on a lot of cool art i think that way or maybe just like goku would have level up and there's four different arts of goku and nah. one is regular one we're, super saiyan we're getting was... a full set yeah that's what it would be you get goku the goku version you get super saiyan goku yeah you get dark goku well, I think they also there is a Dragon Ball Super card game right now, and in that one, there's like a bunch of different ways that it can happen. But I'll, there are like S- Goku Super Saiyan three can just be a card in his own right. So I think they would probably do that in Magic too. They're not going to transform realistically, but I do think the cards should get stronger somehow. That's Dragon Ball Z's big thing is like getting stronger and getting better and stuff like that. So I feel like they would have to at the least most of the like the mechanics, the beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature or something like that. Like a bolster mechanic. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Training. Training, that's a mechanic, right? When you tackle another creature, put a counter on that creature. I could see that. You give uh, Grandmaster What's-His-Face training or something like that. What's the name of the guy who trains Goku? There's a couple. There's Master Roshi. That's who I'm thinking of. The old guy with the beard is Master Roshi. Classic anime character. Old guy, bald old guy with the beard. Bald old guy with the beard, yeah. Um, He would definitely have to have training, for sure. But, yeah, that's it. Dragon Ball Z would just be cool, and I would be excited to see that. That would be a very cool one. That would be a very beloved one yeah, that they definitely. would do. Yeah, definitely. What is your next one? 
Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Dude, yeah, this would be very funny. Realistically, I have like 20 sitcoms that I would have wanted to put on this list. But if I have to only pick one for the sake of trying to make my list like a little variant. Yeah. I would definitely say Always Sunny in Philadelphia. I feel like this is another special one where you would just do like the five of them, right? I actually started a whole set. I downloaded Magic Set Editor. Yeah. And I actually started a whole set. And it was great because drinking is a mechanic. Of course. I did a whole cycle of spells that were spells that said drink to and then had an ability based on how many drinks you took that turn. Okay. So like one was called salt the snail and that was drink two. Then a creature gets minus one minus one for each drink you've taken this turn. Oh, sure. I did the same thing with I will burn you alive. Flavor text was like that last bitch who crossed me. <laughs> and like a lot a lot of like instants and sorceries, you could just make quotes from the show because like a line would just work so well like that. Did you have characters? Like, did you have Charlie the card or did you have D or anything like I that? I went through so many iterations where I was like, they should each be a planeswalker, where like they each got their own color. I had like versions where like I wanted to do them as legendaries, but like they were actually the hardest people to come up with yeah the easier ones were like an actual like rickety cricket or like one of my favorites was bartender greg i loved this one he's from the episode uh the gang desperately tries to win an award and he's just he's just a bartender that works at this very bright preppy bar he's a one three that taps so you can drink one <laughs> like i just loved that and like this is the exact kind of common that this set needs like the blue green drink deck is gonna need bartender greg's so that you can drink and like actually make your salt the snails really good. They haven't done an unset from Universes Beyond yet, right? No. Because I feel like that has to come at some point. I feel like that's so good untapped potential. Like a silver border. Untapped potential. <laughs> yeah, Universes Beyond un would be great with uh With Always, Always Sunny, Sunny specifically. That would be so good, yeah. Anything that encourages people to get drunk in games... Although it could be water. Yeah. You can, that's you can what they say, mean. It's just drink. Yeah. yeah. I don't think they can actually tell people something. to drink, right? My rules text was like to drink, take a sip of a beverage. Like yeah. I didn't. It can you be know, any beverage. Yeah. It doesn't be. Kids play this game. Yeah. It can just be a soda. Just be a little pop. What's your number one? It, your number one universe you want to go visit, Dylan. Yeah, my number one is Berserk. I would love to see Berserk cards more than anything. It's my favorite uh, manga ever. I think seeing Guts and uh, even Casca and Griffith and everyone would be super fucking cool. The God Hand would be so cool to see on cards. The art would have to be incredible. This is another one that probably wouldn't be like a full set, although there are enough characters. I don't think enough of them are like significant enough to make like super interesting cards, but I do think the God Hand would be great, the five of them, and then Guts and Griffith and just like the members of the gang and the Hawk and stuff. I think they would make really cool cards. You could also use cards like the card Berserk and the card Sacrifice yeah. that would work perfectly as like you could do reskins of those. His sword would have to get a card. Oh, his sword. I think there is a sword that's called like the Great Sword or something that says like when it deals damage, you exile all other permanents. It would... Do oh, something the world slayer, the world yeah. slayer or something like that. His is the dragon slayer. It would have to give like plus ten, plus ten, but it would also have to. It, it would have to like what's Elspeth's spear have that when it deals damage to a creature, exile the creature or something like that. Oh uh, no, you give it uh, our gentle armor text where it doesn't even have to. It's when it just on destroy a, on target attack, permanent, you destroy a destroy permanent. A, yeah, it would have to do something like that. It's a mix of Colossus hammer plus our gentle armor. Yeah, is and what it, it is. would have to absolutely have the flavor text that's talking about how it's just a lump of steel or whatever. Every time they talk about this sword, he talks about how it's just a piece of metal. It's not even a sword, or whatever. I think that would be super cool. But yeah, Berserk is like my favorite IP ever. So I would, that's the one that I would want to see the most as universes beyond. How about you? Can you guess mine? It's got to be Bleach. It is Bleach. It's yeah. Bleach. Yeah. <laughs> I put Bleach so high. And again, like there's a bunch of anime that I think would be really cool to see in magic form. But my absolute favorite anime is Bleach. And there's so many cool characters. And they all have such cool abilities that transferring them into magic cards would just be so freaking cool. Yeah, I think it would, be, it would work really well. A lot of spirits, right? Oh, yeah. A lot of spirits that you'd get. You get the entire Gote 13. You get, like, all of the Espada as well, too. You get everything from the Thousand Year Blood War, which you're we're not... There's still two... No spoilers. Yeah, exactly. We still have two whole arcs after the arc that we're on that we have to watch. Right. 
So we got a lot. We're only on like what, episode 150. Bankai would have to be like an activated ability, right? Of each of the guys, it'd have to be like their activated ability. And it would, would it transform them or would it just like give them a buff? There's a ton of stuff that I'm thinking. Like I'm thinking that like Zompak toes could be their own equipment, but they're, they're double-sided equipment. Yep. So like the Shikai is one side and then the Bankai is the other side. But I don't like, I don't like the flavor of like equipping it onto something else. Maybe it has, says oh, you may only equip this to whoever, but then the card's really bad. Maybe what it does, when Byakuya Kuchki enters the battlefield, create a token that's Senbon Zakura. Oh, yes, that's what it is. I was going to say like a partner with situation. Like when you cast the one, you go search for the oh, artifact. Oh, dude. Okay. So if this was a commander set, yeah. you would make it so that it would be oh. like choose a background. Yeah. It would be like choose a Zanpak toe. Which fucks it up then because you can give the wrong Zanpak to the wrong people. It would but have maybe to that's be really cool. Background with, you know, like how partner and then partner oh, with. Oh, yeah. It has to be background Z with whoever. Yeah, and then it partners. So Byakuya Kuchki partners with Senbon Zakura. And Senbon Zakura has a flip side, which is Senbon Zakura Kagayoshi, which is the Bankai then. That would be how it works. And I think that would be awesome. And does the way that partner with work, that's when it enters the battlefield. You get to search your library for that thing then too? Yeah. Mm, my God. Yes, that is exactly how we're doing it. Because then like as you're drafting the set, you go, oh, okay, well, I found Shinzo, but I didn't find a Gin Ichimaru to go with Shinzo. Whoa. I love this so much more than I thought I would 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I think this would be a really fun one to do, and you could transfer over really well. I feel like Orihime would have to be a Mother of Runes type of thing. Oh, totally. Or remove damage from tap to something like that. Like, she gives yeah. protection, and she regenerates, and she reanimates all yeah. at the same time. Yeah. There is some wild stuff in Bleach. By the time we get to the Thousand Year Blood War, Dylan, yeah. there are some abilities that are so ludicrous <laughs> that I can't even fathom how you would put that in magic. And it sucks that we can't talk about them here right now, but in a couple months when we catch up to Bleach and we get to talk about like what the fuck is going on, the fuck is going on in like the current bad guy faction and like what their powers would look like on magic cards, they'd be wild. Comments, don't spoil no anything spoilers no we're only we can spoil <laughs> no one else can spoil i'm so anxious about you and bleach spoilers yeah. for some reason i saw another one where ichigo had hair and it was a little long and he looked really cool he's moving around i was like damn ichigo looks cool his hair's a little long there why is his hair a little long there i think i might know what that part is <laughs> damn it's all right that's cool though yeah. I'm still very excited to see what happens. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $100 patrons. Old and Grumpy, Odd Cesarion, Gecko21, Caleb Ritchie, Caleb Ritchie, Zach Hartley, Kajo Alex, Sean in the Ice, Mark Cirillo, SoCal Acura, Stormageddon, Luke Cook, Demon of Rosgrees, Peter Stewart, Uncle Butts, Nick Foles Goto 9, Kawaja A. Hamid, Lauren Connell, and Baby G Bus. If you want to pick up any of our merch, you can do that at playtowinmtg.com. Huge shout out to Dragon Shield for sponsoring the show. Make sure you use our code playtowin5 at the affiliate link for 5% off. Follow us on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram for more content. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. I hated how I said that. Or listening. Mystic Muffin Man, Nick Saxby, Jacob Bauer, Luke, Luca Brussel, The Big Mike, Nicholas Boulder, Reactive, Tyler Watson, Brian Barrington, Zachary Coulson, Tyler H, X Tyler the Tree X, Mallcraft, Driving Crooner, Jabaha, Mace the Ace, Dalton Poteet, Hobo Ghost, Justin, Man Solo, Pedro, Jacob Depp, Michael Below, Jan Wildfang, Thomas Bueno, and David Nelson. Fuck, they're trying to make it look fake. Can you say a few more words, Boo Hickey? Yes, a shmooga booga booga. Today we are going to be talking about everything that makes the world so great what makes it so lively and clear, and why everything is always fine and dandy. Everything is good. Everything's always good. Everything is always good. Everything is always good. This isn't brainwash. <laughs>